have already heard, there have been great difficulties with getting uh, remote participation and the original person who was working with us is no longer working with us. There's another person and she successfully got it done this time, but there is not the correct uh, information out regarding uh, what kind of a room we need, who needs to, we need 10 minutes before a meeting, and um, I think what we're gonna have to do is add that to the guidelines when we get there. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm going, does everybody have a copy of the agenda? Because if not, I will read it to you so you, Dependra, and Jerry can um, understand you know, that, what's going on. Both Jerry and Dependra are blind, so I will read things to make sure that they can uh, follow what's going on. The first point was opening marks and welcome. Welcome everybody, even though I'm pissed off this morning, but I will get over it. Yes, Jerry, uh, you want to say something? Yes, go ahead. This is the, say who you are. Oh, before you speak, would you give your name for the captioner whose name is Tina? Go ahead. Um, my name is Shadi Abuzara. This is actually just a logistic point. Um, can we have the captioning here as well? I'm getting my neck a bit bent. Is, is that possible? No. Okay. okay. It, I don't think you understand. We need to have one screen captioned here, not two IGF screens. We need one captioning screen. What we've got, Jerry and Dependra, is two screens in front. That's another point. They need to make put the captioning in front of the speaking stand so that people can deal with that. So that's, unfortunately, uh, Shadi, can I just ask you to move down a little yeah. bit and we'll adapt, okay. Thank you, Shadi, for pointing that out. Okay, um, the two screens. Again, we're gonna have to write guidelines on how a room is set up. Give us a minute and we'll sort it out, okay. They're not going to be able to do it now, okay? Go sit on the other side. Okay, right. So, um, all right, I will just go through the agenda. Um, the agenda basically says approval of the agenda, which we're about to do. Number three, review of the accessibility facilities at the IGF which we'll get into in a second. Review of the hotel accommodations and IGF registration form. Review of the, of the in, oh, we have a typo here, of two, the internet facilities and connectivity. Boy, we're gonna have fun with that. Update the accessibility guidelines. Lead editors Jerry Ellis and Shadi Abuzar. Updates to include languages and remote participation and multilingualism is the note that was put in by um, Judy uh, Okite when we were on a call. Eight, funding of accessibility experts and IGF participants, including remote moderators. Nine, preview of the focus session on access and diversity and review of the DICAD activities at IGF. That's number 10. And what happened at the um, uh, well, we haven't had our workshop yet, but we have, uh, it was the two workshops. We have had the DIPLO uh, Foundation workshop on remote participation. And open for, uh, number 11 is open forum of participants and the DICAD members, which is a free for all. And the future activities of DICAD for next year, any other business, and closing. Does anyone else have any other business? Thank you very much. Okay, is the agenda, um, Oh, Jerry, can, no, Jerry, are you muted now? Can you speak? Do I? Okay, yeah, he's okay. He's just putting, okay, so both Jerry and Penda are on live. Okay, um, I take it that the agenda is okay? Right, okay. Yes. Okay, if silence is fine, and that'll take that as a yes. Um, review of the accessibility issues at IGF. I, I asked our super spy, Shadi Abuzara, who has to come back to a microphone. I think we'll stick, Sh Shadi has to be next to, Shadi, can you, I'm sorry, we're, 
It may not work with the system. Since this system works, I don't want to even trust it because we've had such difficulties. One of the things while I'm getting Shadi to do that, would everybody, and I'm going to point to you, say who you are and, and what affiliation that you are doing. I'll start with... Hi, my name is Cheryl Langdenor. I uh, straddle both the technical community, the business community, but more importantly, civil society. Thank you, Cheryl. Ganilla, <coughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Because I'll get you going, please. That was good timing. Uh, sorry I'm late. Um, Gunilla Brink, Australian IGF ambassador. Shadi, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Shadi Abuzara. I work with the uh, W3C Web Accessibility Initiative. Uh, my name is Satish Babu. I'm from India. I've been associated with uh, the Dynamic Coalition since 2009, off and on. Uh, I work with uh, civil society. My name is Arun Mehta. I'm from New Delhi, India. I'm with Bapsi. Those on the phone, please, starting with Jerry. Hi, I'm in Jerry. I'm, my name is Jerry Ellis from Dublin in Ireland. I've been a software engineer for 30 years, but I'm also a consultant in accessibility and usability under the name Feel the Benefit. Dependra, would you please? Dipendra Manocha. I work for DAISY Consortium um, and also for uh, DAISY Forum of India and Suction in New Delhi. I'm from India, New Delhi. Thank you. And Deidre, would you introduce yourself, please? I'm Deidre Williams. I come from St. Lucia in the Caribbean. I'm an end user and interested to make sure that all end users can join in these meetings. And Deidre is also our remote moderator. And I'm Andrea Sachs. I am the coordinator for the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility. And I run the Joint Coordination Activity on Accessibility and Human Factors at the ITU, among other things. OK. Um, thank you very much. We now have it for the captioning record. Um, I, I, Want Shadi to give, please, his view of the facilities when he's ready to do uh, of the IGF, and then we'll go from person to person for their and for what they think. Go ahead, Shadi. Um. So, uh, uh, um, I think I want to first say that um, I think this has been uh, for me one of the. Uh, best IGFs in terms of accessibility so far. Um, I've, I've, uh, I think the conference center is really great. Um, I love the marble floors. <laughs> the deep carpets in the main session hall is, 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 is a bit uh, tedious, but uh, no, but that's, uh, it's, it is a beautiful carpet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think the, the main point I would actually raise where improvements can happen is one that I think is very often missed uh, in, in many cases uh, also outside the IGF, which is quite simple actually. It's providing information. Um, Jerry, I think it's you. Can you not breathe? <laughs> Sorry, Shadi, go ahead. I, actually, Jerry, please continue breathing. <laughs> just, just not in the microphone. <laughs> um, OK, so back again. Uh, I, was, I was talking about um, providing information, uh, uh, logistical information. So for instance, um, th there was no information about which website, uh, which hotels, provide accessible rooms which don't. Um, actually the hotel I ended up staying at I don't think was listed on the IGF website and it's just across the street um, which which is really great because I can go back and forth without needing 
you know, special transportation or cab or whatever. Um, so, uh, and this kind of information was not really available on the website. Um, thankfully, there are, you know, we are in a, in a very uh, well-known uh, vacation resort, so there was a lot of information out there on the web. But other sites that could actually, um, you know, so I could do the planning and, and, and the hotel finding. Uh, but in other locations, if it's not as popular, it will be quite difficult to get information about accessibility in particular. And so I think some, some more effort by, by the uh, um, organizers in providing information. Also, what I lacked was information about um, transportation, uh, um, you know, are there um, transportation services for wheelchairs, for instance. Um, I, I couldn't find that information actually anywhere. Um, also, not by searches on the web as easily. Uh, I mean, I did end up taking a cab from the airport, uh, a normal cab, uh, but it was a bit difficult because, um, um, you know, I, I wasn't sure. Uh, the, the hotel could only provide uh, minivans um, or cars that are higher up that I can't actually get into. Um, and so, um, anyway, uh, long story short, I think it's this information about providing logistical information that could really compensate for a lot of the, uh, you know, physical issues that exist or that could help somebody plan their trip more effectively um, and, and get the logistics sorted out. Um, Thank you, Shadi. Um, just to kind of do a little ducking and dipping and diving, um, I wanted to say something about uh, what you've said. But Jerry, would you like to make a comment and then Dependra? Okay, well, I will make a comment uh, as a person who has been trying to uh, connect remotely. We found that well in advance of the conference, there were promises of uh, testing, but that the promises went on, but the testing didn't happen. So we found that the first meeting I tried to attend, which was the main session on diversity yesterday, I ended up not attending at all because the connections couldn't be established. The one for <clears throat> the uh, Diplo meeting yesterday, I got on after about an hour, uh, but the sound was so poor that I couldn't understand anyone uh, what they were speaking. Uh, I was asked by uh, the moderator to speak at one stage. I did speak. I don't know if I could be heard. Uh, Andrea said to me this morning that, that uh, the hall couldn't hear me, but um, Andrea would tell me we would tell that. But um, I stayed on for about 45 minutes, seeing what the sound improved, but I couldn't then at that stage. I still couyn't understand anyone, so uh, I gave up at that stage. But having said that, this morning it's very good, and I can hear the Pendra, I can hear uh, Shadi, Andrea, all those who spoke, everyone who spoke, I could hear them fine. One issue that uh, I think nobody has thought of, which uh, proved to be a problem up for, the, for uh, at one stage, I did manage to meet, <laughs> jump into somebody else's meeting and hear a very short bit of it, was when somebody was speaking in a foreign language, there was a translator giving the information to people in situ at the meetings, whereas I couldn't hear that. I heard just the French or the Italian or whatever, whatever it happened to be, whatever language it was. So just for the records, I'll mention that because we can then use that to try to improve the situation for next year. Thank you, Jerry. That, that works. I'm glad you've put all that down. Dependra, would you like to make a comment, please? Well, um, I attended this session remotely uh, last um, just just yesterday, and uh, the experience is same as Jerry. Yet, um, the sound quality off from the floor was bad, uh, but the sound from the remote participants I could hear. So, if it was only remote participant meeting, I think I could have participated. But yes. Uh, the main purpose was to be able to participate on the floor uh, in the face-to-face, -face, which was which did not happen. And uh, I was also asked at one point to uh, by the moderator to speak, and I actually declined because uh, I really didn't have 
any idea what was going on on the floor and I just didn't want to no. put in something which was completely irrelevant or uh, something which was not connected to what was going on. So I actually declined uh, speaking uh, yesterday. But yes, I mean, today it's, it seems absolutely wonderful. Um, I mean, I'm actually using WebEx right now. And uh, uh, what I did yesterday was that uh, I was able to make use of the um, the the the, uh, the captioning service. I had an assistant uh, sitting next to me, and uh, the assistant was reading out what was going on. So this I figured out sort of after you can say half an hour or 40 minutes of the conference and at least I was able to know what, what discussion was going on um, in the meeting following that chat. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very, very much, Sapandra. The usefulness of the captioning I've taken note of. Jerry's done that before. There have been a couple of people that have entered the room who I don't know who they are, or actually three. Would you like to introduce yourself, the gentleman in the white shirt, please? Thank you. My name is uh, Yudo. I work as a lecturer at University of Indonesia. And uh, I'm also one of the board member of Pandi. Pandi is actually .id cctld uh, registry. Now, uh, this is one of my favorite topics, actually, which is why I enter here, because I got polio since I was uh, two. Uh, so in Indonesia, actually, uh, we need to do something for the disability, uh, also for disabled people, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Uder. Will you give me your card and details because uh, that way, actually, could you spell your name for the captioner, please? Uh, Udo, Y-U-D-H-O. Yankee UFO Delta Hotel Oscar. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And um, the gentleman at the back, please. You, with the tie. Uh, you'll have to use a mic. Sorry, you don't get to sit in the back and hide. No, you have to push it um, on. I'm Mike Harris from Index on Censorship. I just wanted to get a flavor of the discussion going on today. Well, good. We'd like another con. Mark Harris from? Index on Censorship. Index. I, I'm sorry. You spoke just a little too fast for me. I have a slight hearing problem, so you have to. Sorry. Index on Censorship. We're a free speech organization based in well, London. Well, you notice there's free speech in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right, and there was another gentleman who It's gone already. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, all right, now, who else would like to make a comment on accessibility? Ganilla, would you like to go ahead, please? Um, I'd like to uh, comment about the printed program. Um, it, uh, it really doesn't meet any accessibility provisions. Uh, it's on glossy paper for a start, and the font size and the, uh, the font size in in some sections is so small that um, anyone um, can't read it. Uh, I have reading glasses now, and I still can't read it. And also the color contrast in some cases, black on purple, just doesn't work. So anyone would have trouble reading this, let alone someone with low vision. Thanks. Thank you, and I'd like to add to that, it doesn't take into consideration those people who have color blindness and green and red are used, and they are no-nos. So we've got that to do with. OK, we're getting a list here. Um, Arun, do you have any comments? No? Anybody else would like to make a comment on what they found the accessibility to be like? Yes, go ahead. Please give your name. Uh, thank you, uh, Cheryl Langdon Orr. Um, I think we need to remember that there's diversity within disability ag as well. And um, what works for one of us won't work for the other all that necessarily. I, I love the carpets. It's the only time that my central nervous system is not in hyperdrive in this place. Um, and so I think what we need to do is find ways to meet all our needs. So give me a carpet strip. So you can pop down the side and I'll go down the strip. <laughs> it's that 
sort of thing that, that, that we probably need to help the organisers um, to understand. The distances travelled don't work for able-bodied people when you've got to be out of one room and supposedly in the next room in some microsecond measurement. For heaven's sake, schedulers, there's these things called 10-minute windows and you stop at 10 to an hour or 20 past the half hour and that allows for transition time. Otherwise, what happens for all of us is we're getting later and later and later through the day. With the, um, the large rooms, and I know you and I were at the front of a, of a fairly packed room the other day, um, apart from, um, from juggling uh, around, um, if we had had to evacuate from that room, it would not have happened safely. It is as simple as that. That room was not... It was over capacity, there was no access or egress, there was locked doors, it was not good enough. And we've just got to be smart, not just for ourselves, but for everybody. I mean, you and I had to juggle around the front so much it wasn't funny, but the fact that other doors were locked meant there was a single access and egress and totally full corridors. That's not going to work for any of us. It's been picked up on the, um, on the visible aspects of programming, etc. With so many people nowadays, particularly with visual challenges, wanting to rely on um, haptic or braille readers, we've got to have things that aren't in too many places on websites. Because if you try and get to the live webcast with the captioning, thank you, at least that's on the same screen, um, and then get into the WebEx rooms, you're going layer upon layer upon layer and one piece of technology is not going to be very easy to navigate, particularly with assistive technologies. And that's simple by having a single landing page for each meeting room and then being able to choose from the single landing page for each meeting room how far and in what interactive mode you want to travel in. And I do not understand because we are supposed to be a multilingual society. For heaven's sake, I'm an Australian. We don't even speak English. It's some variation of it. Um, but I've been passionate about internationalised domain names. I'm delighted to see how far we've got. But what are we doing to language diversity? Most of these rooms say in original language only. And if we met multilingual, and in this meeting it should be at least the six UN in each of these rooms, um, can be done remotely. We use real-time interpreter services via phone link for every single ICANN meeting within the at-large structure and we do it into three languages. We have an English channel, a Spanish channel and a French channel. It doesn't have to be people on the ground here. It can be done. And if we have that, it then means that for, for you know, people who actually are trying to listen in English, there is an English channel with a modulated, trained voice that is articulating clearly and it stops us straining and trying to hear. Certainly in main rooms, I always try and listen to the English channel uh, because it, it, it is clear and properly articulated. Some of these rooms, the, the audio is awful. I could go on, but I shan't. Thank you. <laughs> Well, everyone has said something rather interesting, which is making my head spin because there's each subject can be elaborated, which I propose to do. We have somebody that's just entered the room and we make you say your name, partially for the captioner and so we all know. And I think we'll go around the room one more time for some of the people who entered late so they know who we are. Would you like to introduce yourself, young lady? Hi, um, I am, I'm Catherine Easton. I'm a legal academic from the UK and I specifically work on accessibility and disability in relation to the internet. So I do work on European directives and UK and US law applying to the internet. Thank you. Um, just quickly, I'm Andrea Sachs. I am the coordinator of the Dynamic Coalition. Arun? I'm Arun Mehta from New Delhi, India. BAPSI is my organization. I'm Gonola Astrink, Australian IGF ambassador and have worked in the disability and technology field for over 20 years um, on a variety of projects and have many other hats as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm Yudo uh, from University of Indonesia and Pandi.id registry. 
Cheryl Langdenor from Australia. I wear a bunch of hats uh, ranging from civil society to the technical community. Hi, my name is Shadi Abuzara. I work for the W3C Web Accessibility Initiative. I'm actually based in Europe, and uh, so I'd love to talk with you, Catherine, about the upcoming European Directive on uh, accessible websites. I think that's quite important. And Andrea, I just want to tell tale that there's somebody sitting in the room uh, that has not mentioned their name yet either. <laughs> Is that that person back there with the green sweater? Yep. Okay, you get to come in the front, no hiding in the back. Go sit at a, a microphone, please. Thank you very much for doing that, and would you give your name? Satish Babu from India, Civil Society, interested in the technology side of uh, accessibility. Right, and young lady who you have been identified by Shadi, could you please tell us who you are? Hello, my name is Anai. Uh, I'm from Argentina. Uh, speak English. Okay. Because it. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Um, the winner, Frida, my project is a website in uh, the library bo of books in uh, the sign lines, sign lines sign for the children's F, for children's desk. Um, work in uh, uh, work um, differ different different uh, sorry different different uh, project um, for accessibility access. Thank sorry, you. my English. your English will we don't worry. Could you just say your Thank name slowly so the captioner can write it properly? Nama, could you spell your name? Um, Mm. Per cap? Uh -huh. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Give me your card and that okay. way the captioner okay. writes your name. Oh, okay. So can you give yeah, me your yeah. card? Okay, and we'll, we'll say it. I'll say it the best I can. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. I have background in, in, I can sign a little bit. I oh. have background, my parents were deaf. Oh. So you and I will talk later, oh. okay? okay. Um, right, okay. Um, this is getting better. Even though it went out to a bad site and was ready to kill somebody, I'm happy now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Everybody knows me that I have a hot head when I get annoyed. But anyway, um, we have, uh, just to recap a bit, I didn't ask Jerry. I've got Jerry. Everybody else has. Jerry is on the line. We have Jerry say hello. Hi, Jerry Ellis here from Dublin in Ireland. I'm a software engineer for 30 years and a, a consultant on accessibility and usability under the name Field of Benefit. Hi to everyone there. Thank you, Jerry. And Dependra? Hi, this is Dependra Manocha from New Delhi, India, and I work for DAISY Consortium, uh, making books accessible to persons with uh, print disabilities and now adding video uh, to digital books including sign language uh, videos as part of the books. Uh, I'm actually signing my weird signs which is not the same as Argentinian sign language because each sign language is different in each country but she's able to understand me a little bit so we're going to oh, sign. Go. Okay. Okay, okay. so we yeah, yeah. sign. Yes. With, with, so Thank you. two hearing people are signing. That's going to work. <laughs> two, two people who hear are signing. Okay. Now, I want to go back if I can because what we have to do with this information is to document it and present it. Please come in and sit down and we'll introduce you in a minute. Um, just to recap, we are talking about the accessibility of the venue. We are talking about the difficulties that some of people have had. Can you quickly just say your name, please, and who and where you are from, the new people who have sat down? Because we, but we won't reintroduce everybody again. But but okay, go ahead. The lady in the nice blue shirt. Janita Upadhyay, Ekpat International, based in Bangkok, Thailand. 
Thank you. Next person. And I'm Josh Hersant, but I'm coming under International School Bangkok. So Great. Student. Okay. Um, and we have one person sitting down. Are you not saying? Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Right. I just want to go through the, the list that everybody has mentioned and also make a point that on the agenda we have said that um, we've actually covered review of hotel accommodation. We have, Shadi, I'm sorry, would you like to make a comment please? I, I could go after. I just wanted to make a point that um, um, we should help I think the host by trying to prioritize and, and, and give an indication of, of also relative ease of doing something about certain problems. Um, so for instance, I think the carpet is a bit more of a workout for me, but it's not really something that prevents me from being able to participate. Um, I, I can say that it's not a neck breaker. <laughs> uh, um, but um, there are other aspects, for instance, uh, when, when a ramp is um, actually dangerous um, or uh, what was mentioned before about a room being actually uh, seriously beyond any uh, fire emergency, um, just, just, just um, uh, sensibility, Not even, I don't know what the local regulations are, but apart from that, it, it, just, it was just not, not a sensible situation to be in. Um, and um, I, actually, even with, without an emergency, I had a tough time getting out after the meeting. <laughs> um, and, and actually, in between, I wasn't even able to get out to, 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 um, um, because I wasn't feeling comfortable sitting in that room. But anyway, um, so long story short, I think um, we, we should try to prioritize some of the issues also provide some information about how easy it is to do something about something, um, you know, to fix the issues. Um, for instance, the providing information I think is relatively easy. That could go actually quite a long way and compensate for a lot of things. Physical access is something that unfortunately in many areas, um, you know, um, it, it's not going to be easy to change a conference center or, or you know, to, to find another one that is more accessible or something. Um, so th th there will be things that I think we'll just have to live with, uh, but it's a question of how do we go about with that. Thank you, Shadi. Um, you're one of the editors of the guidelines, and what I was about to say was, we've got the captioning. This is, we will have a record of everything everyone has said, so you can have it. It'll be on the Dynamic Coalition website, which is in fact published by the International Telecommunications Union and uh, is easy to obtain once we do our report. We are, the guidelines is next. We've sort of taken all of these together. Review of the accessibility facilities, review of a hotel accommodation. We have not covered registration form. We have not covered, um, well, we have sort of covered the internet facilities and connectivity, but not completely. Um, I'm just going to say something about the registration form and then I'm going to recognize another speaker. So, Shadi, we're going to have to add these, as you say, in a positive way to the guidelines along with two other issues. Sir, would you like to make your comment, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Satish here for the transcript. Yeah, Satish for the transcript. Uh, I have an observation on the, the website of the schedule of uh, IGF. Actually, a couple of observations. One is that uh, the the uh, day one, day two, day three, the labels for that are right at the bottom of the page. And when you open the website, you have to go all the way, move the mouse all the way down uh, to select the day. Now, had it been on top, it, it would have been probably much simpler to choose the day. That's number one. Number two is uh, if by default it opened up on the current date, it would have been very convenient. As of now, it opens up on day zero, and you have to move to whatever day you are. Thank you. Very, very valid point. One of the things I wanted to add was that I've been talking to the previous person who deals with 
uh, who dealt with all the uh, web and the technical issues, and we were talking about the need for an index where you could go from one, two, three, and also cover who, which pages, for instance, in remote participation, would, which would be easier for a blind person to navigate and also be able to go back and forth easily between the audio of the screen reader, which is navigating the page, and the actual meeting itself. And just for the record, we'll be talking about this in the next meeting, which is just following in another room, which is way down the road, upstairs somewhere, I have to figure, but about, which is the, uh, the workshop from the ITU and ICAD, which is uh, a BAPSI DICAD workshop, which is about ex inclusion for all and uh, people who fall through the cracks. <laughs> so we'll be talking about that in greater detail, but that's, we're going to put these in the guidelines. Uh, I don't have a copy of the guidelines here. We probably should have done that, but um, I don't think of everything and I'm not completely accessible myself, but the guidelines are available again on the ITU DICAD webpage and we are in the process of updating it. The one thing I wanted to add is I was told there was no food allergy notation for people who are lactose intolerant and for people who have uh, wheat intolerances that there should be that, which brings me back to the registration form. There should be something on all registration forms that says, do you have any special needs? We're not calling people with special needs. We're calling, are you a person and do you have any special needs? So that vegetarians, they know how many vegetarians there are. And there are lots of vegetarians here who feel that uh, there's too much meat and there's not enough choice and the food is delicious by the way the hosts of real actually the compliments that I've been getting from people who saying the food is delicious but some people can't eat what's there there was another issue and it's gone from my brain but it'll come back so we're I'm taking notes we have the captioning um, is there anything where else that people feel that they would like to add to this before I say something else that should go on this guideline because I want to talk about the guideline a little bit further. Andrew, Jerry, go yeah. ahead. Andrew, Jerry, in Dublin here. Just one comment. Uh, because we were participating remotely, the website was obviously extraordinarily important to us because we don't have access to any other alternative. I found the website extremely good in some areas, but um, quite patchy in others. And I gave the example of the table, which gave the times and the dates of meetings and the button to press for remote participation and so on. And we have a keystroke in our software that should allow you to go straight up and down a column of information. That worked, I'd say, 70% of the time, but didn't, maybe 30% of the time. And you don't know when it didn't work. So maybe when you think you're going straight down a column, suddenly it jumps to the right and you don't know you've jumped to the right, that sort of stuff. So what I always say is that this stuff needs to be tested by experts in advance and the conclusion of any set of guidelines should be that you get the real experts involved as early as you can and that's people with disabilities themselves. Okay, that was the other point I couldn't remember. Thank you. Testing in advance. We need to have access to the room 10 minutes before without fail so that we can test for remote participation, test that everybody has the materials that they need. And uh, we're not going to go through the, the guidelines, but we have a, now, I think, Jerry, since you're also one of the editors, we now have a lot more to put on there, don't we? And I think that's one of the things I'm going to address in the session where we recap and say what can be improved. Uh, I'm going to work with uh, some people here. We should make a bullet list because I'm going to open my mouth or Shadi, you actually, you're the best person to open my mouth. I mean, open your mouth <laughs> and maybe make a point that some of these things have to be done at the same time. This is a very good venue. We want the Indonesian people to know that this venue, you know, okay, you've mentioned the carpet, but we want them to know that this actually has been a really very accessible event and the main issues are 
technically uh, remote participation. The captioners have let me know that there needs to be a bit more broadband and that we have to redesign how we do things before a meeting, getting to and from. All these issues, uh, I'd like some help with that, with writing this list. Shadi, can you give me a hand? And can you raise your hand and speak in the main session, please? I would be delighted to, Andrea. I, I don't feel my arm twisted at all. I'm, I'm just really just happy to volunteer. No, I am, uh, joking aside. Um, and I, I do want to really emphasize again the point of, of um, making information available. I, I, I like to very often compare the example between the underground system in London and the underground system in Paris, for instance. Um, they're both, because they're so old, um, actually um, are, are, are quite difficult accessibility-wise, even though London has been doing quite some work since the, uh, or for the Olympic Games. Um, but um, if you compare the two websites <laughs> for the two transportation systems, uh, you know, one can really help you manage and plan and find alternate routes and so on, and the other you don't. Um, and, and so, um, um, you know, the, providing information, using ICT to overcome a lot of the physical um, access is, is something that's often uh, overlooked. And frankly speaking, at the IGF, I think we should be much more aware of how much ICT can actually help. Thank you, Shadi. I just want to say one thing for everybody to know, and then I'll, gonna, uh, I'm gonna let, I'll let you go. Uh, Shadi was ad invited to address the opening session and brought forward a lot of information to uh, the community and was listened to about accessibility. And thank you for joining us. Would you leave your card with me, please? I don't let anybody escape. We no, this is really for we leaving today. It's so That's per to and it, thank you for bringing your son. We'll have another convert. You'll be a delegate. Okay, so that's one oh, neat. That's one thing. I think uh, you raised a really good point. Speaking Sorry. here, you raised a really good point. We work on uh, children's issues. I think it would be very nice. IG have, has increasing focus on children and youth, but I think it'll be very nice to make it much more inclusive, so that the voices of children who are differently abled also reflect while preparations of the guidelines and the setting forth recommendations, I think it's, it may still be quite an adult voice coming here. I think maybe that should also be included in the recommendations. That was Juanita Apaheye. Janita Apaheye. Janita. I, I will, it's spelled J-U-N-I-T-A. This last name, Tina, is U-P-A-D-H-Y-A-Y. We've got you recorded. We've got who you are. We'll put you on the list. Thank you Thank for you that so comment. Thank, Thank you for coming. Okay. Um, I know. That was good. Okay, Ganilla, go ahead. Going to last spring. Thanks, Andrea. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's fascinating when uh, we talk about accessibility to um, to the outside world. I mean, we know about accessibility, and and often people think instantly about physical accessibility, and that is often more difficult and more expensive to fix. Whereas when it comes to accessible websites and accessible information, really it, it, it shouldn't be that hard. And it's, it's changing that mindset all the time about what, what accessibility really means across the board. I mean, just one example, when I was using the, um, the IGS site for the, the program, there is um, um, magnification um, but with my browser, um, it seemed to get stuck on, on a high magnification, so you could reduce the magnification on the, the side, but, but not in, in the program itself, and so you couldn't scroll across. And I'm sure there was a way to do it, but it wasn't easily done. And, and again, it, it shouldn't be that hard to fix. So it's all of these things online that really um, there needs to be more awareness of, uh, apart from the physical uh, accessibility of venues. Okay, that's good. And speaking of things, one of the things, oh, we have a remote car. Okay, go ahead, Deidre, give us the remote comment. Um, the, the comment is coming in from Jaipendra. 
Thank you. Dipendra, please go ahead. I'm sorry I didn't ask you. Go ahead. Uh, and this was uh, regarding the, um, uh, the registration form. Uh, there was a column for putting in uh, if you are traveling with your spouse, but there was no way I could inform during the registration form that a person with disability is actually traveling with an escort. So um, I think if, if that can be made uh, also, because it, it's a recognition that yes, there are persons with disabilities who would be traveling with, with an assistant. That'll go on, Dependra. Thank you. That's a very good point. We'll definitely put that on the guideline list. Um, okay. One of the things I'm just going to point out here, so it's in the captioning, we have two screens in the front that say IGF Internet Governance Forum, which is showing me WebEx. Uh, I have a slight hearing problem, and a lot of people who present do. Um, I would like to have the captioning in front of me so I could watch the captioning as well as the IGF page. And sometimes what happens is that the equipment can't be separated, which is what was explained. And I do understand that because I've run into that before, that we don't have the ability to change. Yes, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Cheryl langdon -Orr. Um But what can be helped is the location of these things on the pages. For example, there's a huge amount of white space. Um, if you look where the captioning is associated with the webcasting, huge amount of white space to the right-hand side of the, the video running and that's a good thing to, to connect remote participants or I often do it even when I'm sitting in the room because it, it helps me. Um, but we've got this big piece of real estate where the captioning could be running and scrolling next to the vision. Uh, it's just a matter of working out what goes where to best meet our community's needs. And can I just say, if you get it right for us, you get it right for everybody. Absolutely right, Cheryl, and again, we're going to be talking about that in our workshop because we have been talking exactly about that because I'm in touch with the WebEx people from Cisco and they are sympathetic. They do have the understanding, but there are other issues in changing a design and most remote participant tools are designed with a one-shoe fits everybody. And some people don't understand why you don't put captioning in the chat box. I had a long conversation because you obliterate for blind users if they are able to navigate or anybody who's visually looking at who's on the actual remote participation list, which is why it's important that we have a moderator. So there are lots of issues uh, regarding captioning being on the web, and I'll go into this in greater detail in the next workshop because some people have to make it the font bigger, the color different, uh, be able to scroll and unscroll. So um, that will save for that. Um, now, we've got a pretty good list of the web design, of the uh, positioning of uh, how we find the information, that it should perhaps open on the day that we are having, that there should be an index, that there should be multilingualism. In, actually, there should be multilingualism in the pages so that if you needed the French, if you are using a screen reader, if you, uh, in other words, there's more work to be done on designing the web, and I know Shadi has been thinking about this a lot, and also some of the other people I've discussed this with. Are there any other issues that you think would be important to add to the accessibility guidelines? Okay, there probably will be more. If you want to uh, do that, you, you simply just contact us and we'll, we'll, we'll certainly add it. Shadi, may I ask you a question? Um, we have to re-emphasize, well, that's telling you something and then asking a question. We need to re-emphasize the guidelines at the, at the main session because you did say we want to assist, we want to help when we were at the, at the opening meeting. So I think it's important, again, that we are redoing it. It will be submitted with the DICAD report and that it will be updated, but it will go out on the reflector to all the DICAD members to be able to add to it. So. Uh, uh, go ahead, Ganella. Sorry. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think it's going to be um, um, a great list, but uh, there are some existing um, guidelines on, on planning accessible meetings, um, which I'm sure you're aware of. In Australia, for example, there's one that's done by um, meeting and events Australia in conjunction with the Human Rights Commission and so there has been consultation on that and and uh, I've, I know that there are a lot of other ones internationally. I'm just thinking if it would be worthwhile to um, check through some of those just to see if there are any <coughs> missing points that we in the room and remotely haven't come across that that proactively would help in future. That's an excellent idea, Penelope will go do that. If you could um, just let us have those links and Shadi, because we do have this list, how long have we had this list? Since Rio, haven't we? Go ahead, Shadi. Yeah, and I, I fully agree with Gunella, and I, actually that, that was one of the comments I had raised on one of the calls that we had on, for DICAD. Unfortunately, it was action item on my side that I didn't get to, which is to do a more thorough search on, on uh, some of the resources that are out there. Um, there, there are, I, I've seen a lot. Um, I just haven't done a, a more thorough uh, research. I think what we should do is, is maybe have some kind of a short and, 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 and kind of a a motivating and something that's more specific to the IGF, uh, higher level kind of main point summary, and refer out to more resources, more in-depth resources, um, to varying resources, because the, the list will, will grow. There, there are a number of things um, that I, I didn't want to raise, but I think, um, you know, I, I don't think are, are worth as much discussion uh, on the call right now, but um, um, do need to be in there. We, we talked about, for instance, the name badges, and how we can make the name badges maybe double-sided and increase the, you know, the font size for the name. Uh, particularly as a male, it's not always comfortable to have to kind of stare to, to find the name of the person in front. Um, and, and, and so, um, um, you know, the, the um, signage, I think, throughout the venue, uh, I think, could be improved as well. And I think that's also something that's fairly simple to do. Um, uh, what else can I think of? Uh, yeah, signage including where the accessible bathroom is, having more than one accessible bathroom in such a venue, um, you know, th th things like that. Um, but, but those are more details. So if people think about other things, please just drop me a line. Um, we, we don't need to discuss all those details right now, uh, and, and we'll, um, but I think they, they should be somewhere in there or, you know, somehow referenced. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Shadi. Uh, we do have a remote participating con, but somebody's leaving. I want your business card. You do not escape. Can you give me your card? Are you with, is he your colleague? Okay, then we know what's going. Okay, fine. We'll get you later then. Um, Dependra has a comment, please. Um, and I wanted to raise the issue of the documentation. <clears throat> the electronic documents uh, which are being distributed. The, um, now there is a possibility and there is a way that uh, that we can have these in a very well structured and a good format. And if we simply have a, a, a line in our specification saying that the documents, the digital documents which are on the web or are distributed should be in EPUB format, and um, of course, we are working to make it more accessible for uh, people with hearing disabilities, so that the so that even the um, uh, sign language can be part of this digital documentation. Uh, there had been a, a, an example of such documentation, um, which was presented at. Uh, during the UNCRPD meeting during the General Assembly on the 23rd of September. Uh, so, so we are moving towards that, but till, till we have that, this EPUB can be the main buzzword for accessible digital documentation uh, that, that may be included in our uh, guidelines. I'm just repeating that EPUB format to be included as the format for digital documentation. Thank you. 
for those people like myself who don't know exactly what it's EMAP. Would you explain? Uh, sorry, e that's e e e pub. E -P -U -B, e -pub. It's actually an uh, e -book So that's format. a form. Yeah. EPUB is what that. Okay, my hearing is not so good, so I now understand EPUB. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to recap. Are there any other comments from Jerry, perhaps, at this point? One of the things I'm doing is, uh, and also when I don't do it, we have Deidre who waves at me and says one of the two gentlemen has something to say. But one of the things we need to do is train chairmen. And, train, and I'm very lucky. Tina knows me, uh, so I don't actually have to say my name. <laughs> She's heard my voice a hundred million times, who's our captioner. Uh, we have to remember to say our names before. But uh, we have to train chairmen and moderators to deal with persons with disabilities so that they know at this time we don't have the best remote tools to allow people with sight disabilities or are totally blind to be able to access remote participation. So the moderator or the chairman has to say who is on the line what the situation and to ask them to make a comment. That's one example. There are others. So uh, it's, it's how we have to set up guidelines for moderators and chairmen how to run an accessible meeting. And this has come up several times and I'm going to, I think we're going to add this to the next DICAD meeting because there will be a DICAD meeting which are conference calls, uh, which are captioned which we have a callback system, which is not done here, which is, costs money, and there is a situation about that where we've discussed it with Cisco, but once they said, once when they donate the WebEx to IGF, they did not take that into consideration. It's now on the, uh, it's now in their face. Uh, hopefully they, they will, but they have to open it to everybody, and that could be an extra cost unless they do changes to the actual <coughs> website and how things are done. So again, we'll talk, talk about these in greater detail at the, um, at the next workshop if we have the time. So we have to do a guideline for people on how they run an accessible meeting. And I hope I'm doing all right. So in any case, before we move on, we have been reviewing, we actually just were talking about number seven, remote review of remote participation. We've covered it. Jerry, do you want to say anything about it or does anybody else want to say anything about it? Because I do want to say before I do that is that the people here have worked very hard in AV to try and help us. And we want to say thank you to you and to your colleagues who have done a good job in what they know. We need to train AV people also on what we need to tell them about persons with disabilities. So maybe we'll add that to the guidelines as well, Shadi? Yeah, and I, I just remembered also uh, you and I, we talked the other day about um, also dietary requirements. I think this year there was much more improvement in having uh, the tags, the labels for the food, so you could at least identify the food. I think there was also quite a broad variety of different foods, um, which which I think um, allowed quite a large, um, you know, possibility of, of, of being able to, to put things together. Uh, but I do think that um, when you actually wanted to ask more about ingredients or something, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not as affected by that, but if somebody could give me more input about what their observations are and what they um, missed in terms of, um, um, yeah, food. Go ahead, please. Um, one of the, my fellow um, Australian IGF ambassadors um, has gluten intolerance and lactose intolerance. John Selby, yes. And he really had extremely limited choice. He couldn't use any of the buffet because there's always the chance that there might be some flour mixed in, in in whatever ingredients there are. And I saw last night at the gala dinner, uh, the kitchen organized a, a plate for him. And I, I felt very sorry for him, I must say. There were lettuce leaves, there was some processed meat and some corn on his plate and not much else. 
so, I mean, there, there are certainly m many more opportunities for, um, for um, cooking uh, with um, gluten intolerance in mind and lactose intolerance. Thank you, Ganilla. I did notice somewhere that there was a gluten-free something, and I think it was at the breakfast at my hotel. There was gluten-free bread, and uh, so it can be done with the sign. So I did see that. Okay, so I think that definitely is going on the list. Yes, go ahead. Who wants to speak? This is me, if I may make an... Of course you may, Deidre. Go. Um, when Dipendra put his hand up, I sent him a message, which of course was probably useless to him, to tell him that he was in the queue. If you're in the room, you can see that you've caught the eye of the chair, or you're told, you know, you, you, you. But if you're online, you don't know if the moderator has noticed you. And if you can't read what what's in the chat, then I, I don't know if anything can be done about that, but... That, we'll bring that up again at our next workshop, which is going to follow this meeting, because we're going to probably get into a, a, a conversation about that. Please, go ahead, Cheryl. Thank you, Andrea. Cheryl langdon or Just on that, um, I, I use a lot of online collaborative tools, and that's part of um, the training of us in the room, the chairmen and the moderators, um, because a, a tool, because I use multi-channel, multilingual, real-time translation, we constantly have to say, um, okay, the speaking queue is, and that way the, the, the listing of, of who's included, it's tricks of the trade, but it's stuff that's easily overlooked. Not so much in rooms this size, we're talking to each other. When you get into the bigger fora, that's where this, this should be, it should be standard operational procedures that are given out to the people, including the chair people and moderators who may not be properly trained. Just as a reminder, yeah, please address the following. Cheryl, would you be willing to help us design that guideline because you obviously, I have not ever worked a huge meeting. So what you've just told me is I should refer to Deidre and say, do we have a list of people in line and would you give that list please and then that way I would do it more fairly instead of, because I know my two people, yep. which, uh, did you guys know you're my two people? <laughs> um, I know Jerry and Dependra are on the line and I know them personally and I'm hmm. in tune with them and I do remember most of the time to make sure that they are included. Um, I actually would either Jerry or Dependra like to make a comment about that suggestion. Okay, I hope they're still there. Okay, that was that's excellent. So, okay, that was Cheryl. Which, and I know you've given me your card, but this is a separate little thing. Can I have another one? But don't get up right now. We'll just or give it to Shadi, and Shadi will pass it to me. Uh, okay, so we're actually. Um, I'll just go through that. We've reviewed the accessibility features at IGF. We have reviewed the hotel accommodation and the IGF registration form. We have reviewed to an extent the internet facilities and connectivity. Um, we have uh, the up we're talking about the updates on the accessibility guideline and we are adding a new guideline for chairman and people and moderators who run meetings with persons with disabilities especially remotely, so we'll find, come up with a title. Thank you. Who Andrew, you? if I may, Cheryl again, it's not just disabilities. This is mainstream. Mainstream, correct. This, this, this is language diversity. It's, it's, it's equitable access for all type questions here, but, you know, remote or otherwise. One of the things I want to give everybody here is the ITU brochure. The ITU brochure, I have, I'm going to take that and put it in the main session. I'm not going to put it anywhere else. We have accessibility mainstream in Spanish as well, and in Russian, and in English, and in French. And I'll put these out because mainstream, um, and in Arabic. I brought them from the ITU, so if you want to take some of these, you get first crack of the whip, and I'm going to take them, but I have it in Spanish as well. So you can take as many or as little as you want, because that is the actual order of the day. 
for us to make it mainstream. Thank you for that wonderful word because I've forgotten to use it. Um, okay, so we were, but to, just to recap, um, we were going to include languages and remote participation and multilingualism in the accessibility guidelines. We should also include that in the guidelines on how we run our meetings for chairman and for uh, remote moderators. Okay, now, are there any other comments that people would like to make, any questions that people would like to make regarding what we do with this particular information or any more comments regarding what needs to be done before I move on? Please, go ahead and say your name for me one more time. Ah, Ana y my name. Okay? Argentina. Um, I work um, in thing, uh, language interpreter. Yes. Um, um, uh, I see F, GF, uh, not accessible to me. Uh, um, one, one room accessibility. One, okay. Um, if there is of an uh, interpreter in Spanish, uh, imagine what uh, will happen if um, I have interest in um, one death. Okay, se entiende? Sorry. No, we under, I understand you very well. Anna, may I say what I think you have said? You have said it is not accessible for you because there's a language problem of yes. Spanish, not enough Spanish. Yes. In the main session, you are able to follow with the machine. You are an interpreter for sign language and you work with deaf people. And there is a problem here that there is no sign language for deaf people, and that is correct. We don't, we have to put that on the form for special needs. At the ITU, we work with lots of deaf people. Uh, we also, if you come to the next meeting, you will see that I have deaf people who participate remotely with sign language, with captioning, yes. and with remote, all at the same yes. time. And they need to do that here. So we have done that. I understand you totally. I understand what you have said. So uh, go ahead, Vanilla. Uh, terminology in the disability field is always uh, challenging. And, and some people in the disability movement find special needs um, a bit of a challenging uh, ter term. Um, I'm wondering if we can uh, use the words, do you have any accessibility or dietary requirements? I think it's normal to say any dietary requirements. I think people have accepted that one. Special needs is awkward, that is correct. Uh, we were toying with the idea of using the word specific needs, but um, it's become commonplace special needs, but it could be improved upon. Um, we also do need special documents. It's something that the ITU is working on to find the correct terminology because half, this is the area that I know you and I both work in, that half the population of persons with disabilities, and in Europe it's people with disabilities, and the UN says it's persons with disabilities, and the Arabic world does not like the word disabilities at all and wants to use special needs. And I'm working with uh, one of the chaps from the Arab Emirates, he wants to define what a person with disability is, and I'm trying to discourage that because there's, it's impossible. It's totally impossible, but he's a lovely chap, and we've been talking because I sent him an article that said, uh, what do you call a, per, a child who has a disability? How do you call him? And the first sentence was, you call him by his name. So it, it's kind of like, um, it's a stigma sometimes in other parts of the world. So if anybody has a better idea of how to put that on a form, please give it to us. But in the meantime, um, 
dietary requirements, accessibility requirements might be a, another choice. So we will take that under consideration. I hope you'll join us on the call, even though there's a time difference when we plan the next dynamic coalition call that is captioned. And also, if you just want the captioning from the call, just request it and we'll send it to you. So thank you for that, Camilla. You're absolutely right. Um, okay, Chatty, this, we have funding of experts and, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, that's not what I want you to comment on, but you can. We have funding of accessibility experts, IGF participants, including remote moderators. Yes, go ahead. Again, this is me, Deirdre, speaking. Um, I know this is a United Nations meeting. I know that the United Nations has um, official languages, but languages are one of the issues that concern me a great deal. And it seems to me that you are disabled at this meeting if you speak Indonesian or Balinese, because the languages we've been talking about are all from the West. They're not from this part of the world. I don't know whether it's worth mentioning that if you come to somewhere like this, where there are a lot of people who speak another language, some accommodation might be made. If I can paraphrase that and say that I've got the right slant on what you've said, Deidre, if we're in a host country whose language is not one of the six UN languages, that we should give them the courtesy of being able to participate in the discussions by having interpretation for that language. Cheryl, go ahead, please. And uh, thank you, Cheryl Langdenor. There is the precedent. Um, the, the end user, what we call the at-large community within ICANN, which is why I have to work in at least three languages all the time, um, have also now got it as standard operational procedure that local language is included. So it's our UN languages and local language. And, and that really, because the outreach opportunities are missed unless local engagement can be effective. And so Thanks. quote Thanks. I can on that one. That's a very good way of putting it. Local languages are included. Okay. Um, that can go on our guideline list. Have you got that? Okay, that's great. Um, does anybody, before we um, move, anybody else have a comment regarding the list? Because funding is where I was going. Andrew? Yes, go ahead, Jerry. Jerry here in Dublin. Just one comment. We are a small group, and we're addressing questions which have been addressed for many years in many parts of the world by many organizations. Um, we, we need not to reinvent the wheel. So we need to coordinate with other organizations. For instance, the World Summit on the Information Society, the UN, ITU itself that works in internationally, I'm sure have plenty of information about how you make, uh, uh, address this question of language. Um, we say a lot of the questions of remote participation. <coughs> Australia has guidelines, Canada has guidelines. The ITU's focus group on audiovisual accessibility has just uh, finalize the document on remote participation. So what I'm saying is we need to coordinate with other groups, with other interests, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. So that's what I'm asking. Jerry, thank you. I didn't say anything about the focus group on audiovisual accessibility, which has got its workshops. It has last meeting yesterday. It's the work and it's deliverables. They're not recommendations yet or standards, they're being delivered to its home study group to become more finalized. They have been studying um, remote participation and we will utilize the information that we get from them. They're having their workshop today, I believe. They had it yesterday as well. So that's very good pointer and we hope that uh, we, just to tell everybody, the ITU, the JCA is open, which is the Joint Coordination Activity on Accessibility and Disability. You do not have to be a member of the ITU uh, to be able to participate in ITU activities. If you're dealing in this particular area, you can join that reflector uh, as well as the DICAD one, which is on the same page. Uh, we'll get, I mean, the links to go to those two specific uh, groups. So if you want to see what's going on in standardization, we're also standardizing relay services on user needs, which we'd love for people 
Uh, I wanted to direct that to Anna. I believe that's your name. That the deaf, when they use a phone, uh, and the person hears, doesn't have the TTY, uh, we have a relay service. You have, in your country, a relay service? I want to, to tell you, ask, while I think about it, that I must talk to you about relay service, where the person hears, he hears, this person is deaf, tight, speak back and forth for the telephone. Y are you familiar with that? Go ahead. Yes, in Argentina, in Argentina, um, this work, uh, yes, it's working. Um, one, one person, um, types, yes. Types on a machine, yeah. Yes. Um, I think igual que esto. Captioning. Caption. Uh, it's one form accessible. accessible. We will talk later, but what I'm trying to point out is that we're doing work on standardizing tools that will make it possible for deaf people to participate. So, now I'm back to this funding issue. One of the problems, if we can move on, is that okay? I think we've covered one through seven sufficiently, and we have a very limited time left. Funding because I think we have to quit in about three minutes. We have a, Dependra wants to speak. Go ahead, Dependra. Uh, a very short comment. Um, that uh, I, it, it's a suggestion for ITU to work with uh, uh, people like Cisco and a screen reading software developer like NVDA or the Freedom Scientific to to launch a project to make this um, remote participation software completely accessible. It's completely doable. They are almost halfway through. I can participate. I can see that um, a lot of these buttons are made accessible using NVDA screen reading software. The chat, etc., can be made accessible if uh, people like Cisco, NVDA developers, and, and, a, and an agency like ITU come together. Thank you, Dependra. I'm on the case. I've been working on it for two years. I think this time it's kind of sinking in and Dependra I'd like you to help me be involved in this if you would please because uh, I think it's important that you and Jerry continue to write about what is what your difficulties are and I'm continuing to communicate with them and we're get, it's getting it's getting better they're listening but the problem I was told was that uh, it takes six months first, they said, to get anything, doing nothing before something gets done. Then it was a, a year before anything gets done, and now it's 18 months. So um, they're aware it, it's going through their system, but I think this time they've been sufficiently embarrassed where they are gonna do something. How fast, I can't tell you. So I want you and, and Jerry to stay in the loop on that with me and anybody else who wishes to join. So future activities, um, we have discussed what happened in the remote participation situation about uh, the Diplo workshop did concentrate on some of this. There will be a following um, workshop for DICAD and VAPC uh, on people who fall through the cracks following this meeting at 11. So we'll, we can also continue there and talk more about that and we are not going to review a, a workshop we haven't had yet, but we didn't know the scheduling yet. So um, an open forum of participants and DICAD uh, members, I think we've been doing that now as we've been speaking, so we've kind of accomplished that. Before I um, go any further, is there anything else anybody else wants to say? Because I'm about to close the meeting on time. Does anybody else have any comments? Go ahead, um, Deidre. Uh, ah, good. Hel hello, um, I'm more or less re responsible for the... Name. Ah, hello, my name is Adam Turhan. I'm responsible for remote participation. And I wanted to explain what has actually happened. We were, I guess, unlucky and a little bit ill-prepared. Ill preparation, we booked meetings right before the disabled access sessions so we didn't have time to troubleshoot. And unlucky, 
Yesterday's session, we had cabling issues. Cable broke down. We couldn't trace it. We couldn't change it. And today, this is one room where we are having network connectivity problems. These two machines work, which provide the voice access. But the main presentation access, unfortunately, we cannot connect to network. So I will put them into my report for the next IGF, and we will uh, aim for the best room to be reserved for the disabled access sessions for the remote participants. We will also write to our uh, remote participation providing platform of a disabled access uh, enabled website, just like you will see in your mobile devices. We need something much clearer and easier to access, so we've identified that. And I will also make sure that no meetings are booked in the same room with disabled access uh, meetings at least one hour, preferably two hours before the session, so if there's a trouble, we have time to fix it. I apologize for the unforeseen circumstances in some cases and a little bit of ill preparation or ill thought out um, sessions. So please accept my apologies. Adam, thank you, that's good news. And also we are preparing a more definite list for guidelines which we will share with you, uh, which Shadi and I are going to be working on. We won't have it completely ready by today, but I have your email, Adam, don't I? Adam Peake. You cannot escape. Mm. And I will give you... Actually, I'm not Adam Peake. Oh, sorry. Ad <laughs> sorry, I couldn't catch that, Cheryl. Can you use it's, the mic? It's okay. It's, yeah, uh, surname is Turhan. T-U-R-H-A-N. But you have my email address. Of course I do. Okay, I've got you. That's right. I'm sorry. I mix, I mix people up. I've got it. Okay. Sir, sir can you say... Turhan. Turhan, that's it. Yes, because you were working with... Uh, Farhane. So that's yes. fine. Okay, that's great. I am um, that Jerry, are you and Dependra happy with that? Andrew, I'd say that we, we do recognize that uh, uh Parthenes and Mr. Turan have been working very, very hard. I think that's obvious that they have been working very, very hard. And I'm glad to hear that some of the problems were beyond their control. I would just ask that in the future that you try to include people with disabilities in testing as, as far in advance as you can. Try to, try to iron out the problems in advance rather than trying to iron them out half an hour before a meeting begins because as you see it just doesn't always work that way. But we do appreciate and we recognize the hard work that you did put in. Thank you and also we're going to go to the next meeting which is our workshop, which also has remote participation, which will be in the next room. Uh, we're going to, I think it's Kinsa, where is it? It's, we're going to go to, um, sorry. Ooh, I'm sorry, that was me flashing the paper for, excuse me. It is called, where it's number 38, Accessible Inclusion for All, People Who Fall Through the Cracks, Room 5, Yulawatu number 5 is where we're going now. So you and I will get together on that. Go ahead. That's why I'm here. All right, we're almost at the very end. And um, the future activities for DICAT, I think we have clarified. We've got two guidelines, one being improved, one going to be written. Cheryl's going to help with the one on, on uh, Chairman, Ganilla is going to help with the one on guidelines. So Jerry, you've got help from Ganilla from Australia, and Shadi, uh, you and Jerry and Ganilla can work on that. And we've got the captioning. Please look at the website um, for. And if you're not registered with DICAD, please send me an email. I'm on the web as well, and that we will make sure that you know the date of the closed. Ca I mean, the captioned conference call, which we will have probably sometime in January to recap everything. Um, does anybody have any other comments before I close the meeting? Thank you very uh, much. You oh, yes, yeah, sorry, Jerry. Dipendra? Jerry, you do? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Dipendra here oh, sorry, again. Dipendra. So, uh, as a summary, what, when you were saying, uh, uh, would you want to take up this issue of also of uh, 
working with Cisco and uh, screen reading software developers to make their remote participation software accessible. Does yes. that also come into our future agenda? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Thank you. We'll make a note of that to make sure. I didn't say that at that moment, but I'm saying it now. Yes, I am. But also, we're also working with Adobe Connect and other, it, it's not just Cisco, but Cisco is for IGF, but we are working on that. And any of the people in this room who want to participate on that, I'm very happy to have help on board. Go ahead, Cheryl. Oh, yes, okay. And we have another comment. Um, this is from Deirdre again. Don't forget about Diplo, who have been doing a lot of work on remote participation. Thank you very much. And one of the things that happened, which I thank you to remind me, is that Jerry's comments that were made, even though we couldn't hear them, uh, Ginger Pack heard them and she included them in the document that is going to be part of their recommendation for remote participation and we will be also looking at that and DJ will probably be popping in and helping us with that along with Ginger so where the team is growing so right now I'm going to go to the next room and then I'm available to anybody during lunchtime I'm bright pink so uh, People come and talk to me. Thank you very much for participating. I really appreciate your interest and your time. The meeting is closed. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Tapendra.